What a way to spend a few days in the Cayman Islands. The Cayman Islands Classic in Georgetown. It's three days, eight teams playing 12 games. And if there's any spare time, you get to the beach and enjoy the beautiful weather. And here's what we'll have over the next few days on Facebook. In about 10 minutes, we'll have Akron and Clemson in game one of the tournament, then Georgia and Illinois State. And then after a brief break, we'll have St. Bonaventure from the Atlantic 10 against Georgia State. And then in the nightcap, it'll be Boise State and Creighton. Again, eight teams, 12 games over the course of three days. And welcome. Noah Kozlov alongside former Liberty star Tim Scarborough and Oklahoma State's all-time leading assist is Doug Gottlieb. We're with you calling all these games. Kristen Balboni is in the Cayman Islands, and she'll join us shortly. What do you think of the actual teams that we have down there? Well, you know, there's a good mix of mid-major programs, St. Bonaventure, George, Georgia State, but there's also some Power 5 conference teams with Clemson and Creighton. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. But I'm excited about the mix, and it's a really good mix of coaches as well with Ron Hunter and Brad Brunell from Clemson, Mark Schmidt. A lot of X's and O's will be drawn up this week, and it should be exciting. So, Doug, what's the challenge for the coaches just playing and the players really playing three games in three days? All right, first, like, and one of the great things about doing these games on Facebook is there's interaction, okay? So take it easy on Tim. When he says mid-major, <laughs> it is not a bad word, okay? It's, it's not a bad word. Mid-major is based upon <laughs> scheduling and budget, budget. And, yeah. and more, more than – Conference more than affiliation, Conference too. affiliation. Yeah. Um, more that it doesn't mean your team's not good, right? It's it's how it's also based upon how we evaluate players. Like, oh, he's a mid major plus, he's a mid major minus, a high major minus. It's mm -hmm. a it's a basketball term that if you're not truly a basketball person, you may have parachuted in and said, wait, wait, Creighton's no longer a mid major; they're a high major in the big. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, what I think of the of the tournament, I think it's great. It's a great format. Look, if I go down there, it's warm. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but first thing is warm. That's check good. Second thing is three games in three days. It's Awesome. So if you've been pouting about your time on the bench, your time is coming. Your ability to prove yourself in an actual game is coming. And for a coach, you really get to find out what's what. You've had three games and a couple exhibition games and months of practice, but now you really, over three days, you really find out what works best for your team. Mm -hmm. And we have teams in various parts of their growth curve, um, you know, from a, a Boise State who lo loses Chandler Hutchinson trying to figure out you know, who their guy is and what their pecking order is like. To a Clemson, an older, mature team that surprised everybody last year, now they have massive expectations mm -hmm. this year. So I love the format. I love that there's no day off. And if you're a player, you, you just, you know, if you play poorly, you got a game coming up the next mm -hmm. day. And the other part is, like, let's not undersell the value of these games. We get to March, and their resume is on a sheet of paper. You may have played Georgia State and thought, you know, that was just one game in the Cayman Islands. It does, in fact, matter for your seating or even your entrance to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and especially this year with the NCAA evaluation tool, the net tool, without having, without having the RPI anymore, they're not looking at when you played. It's just who you who played. Who you played. Exactly. Right. So whether it was in the beginning of the season and it's or it's a neutral site game, and nobody cares about your travel and your issues getting to the Caymans or getting home or if you had a player that, you know, I know you tweeted out earlier this morning about St. Bonaventure not being fully healthy. Like, we like to think that comes into account, but it mm -hmm. really doesn't come. It can't when you're simply using a spreadsheet. All right, so let's get into our tournament favorites for this one. And I think it's pretty obvious. Clemson, top 20 team. They have four seniors, actually fifth-year guys, so they're experienced. They have scoring. They have great coaching. Look for them to really – put a, 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 a stamp on this tournament this week. What he said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I, I, look, there's an adage in college basketball, get old, stay old. And Clemson has kind of figured that thing, uh, figured that thing out with four fifth-year seniors coming off a year in which Brad Barnell went from on the hot seat to getting a new contract. How about that? So Clemson, <laughs> has, Clemson has huge expectations. But, like, look, heavy is the head that wears that crown. You know, you walk in, you're Clemson, you got the big tiger paw across mm -hmm. your chest, and you have a ranking next to you. Akron sitting there going like, hey, we hadn't lost this year. We're going to shoot a lot of things. We're, we're coming right for your, for your head. So uh, I, too, think Clemson is the favorite. And I, I, we've, we, there's no dissent on this panel. Dark Horse? Dark Horse, you know, I, was, I live in Atlanta, so Georgia State is a program I'm around a lot. I love Ron Hunter. Probably has the best player in this tournament in Marcus, DeMarcus Simons. So they are my dark horse. But as you said, Doug, 
Akron is really good. Yeah. And if they survive today, they obviously they play Clemson first, and we pick Clemson. But if Akron wins today, look for them to maybe take this whole thing. Well, then, if whoever wins in, in, our, in our first game, Akron-Clemson, I think is going to be playing Illinois State, and that would be the winner of the second game, Illinois State-Georgia. So I guess it would really have to be a dark horse. That's and that, dark and that horse. is my dark horse, is, <laughs> is Illinois State, because I think uh, Malik Yarbrough has gotten the message about consistent effort. All right, uh, I'll, I'll go with down the other side of the bracket. I'll, I'll take, you know, the winner of the Boise game against Creighton. I'll, I'll take Creighton. Um, you know, Damian Jefferson is a transfer, still kind of getting his feet wet and playing for Greg McDermott. Um, I love the way Creighton plays. I do think it tournament play and the ability to spread you out. They run a lot of quick sets that you don't have a great scouting report for. You simply can't prepare for everything they do. And Tyshawn Alexander, when he gets hot, can really shoot the basketball. Yeah, and he pushes tempo, too. When Tyshawn Alexander gets going, he gets everybody else involved. They can be really tough. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure he's a true point and how he handle, how he'll handle pressure, but I'm not sure he'll face the type of defense that's really going to rattle him. Uh, that said, I'll take Creighton as my, as my dark horse, uh, but I can't wait to see him take on the Broncos tonight. All right, so that'll be our final game of the evening. And as we take a look at what else we have going on today, and again, our opener with Akron and Clemson and then Georgia and Illinois State. We'll follow that. And remember, all these games are on Facebook. St. Bonaventure, who comes in really beat up. They'll have Georgia State and then Boise State and Creighton. So as we take a look a little bit closer at the first matchup with Akron and Clemson, Doug, Jamond Ivey, a guy who dropped 48 in a game last year against Ball State, just has to get that three ball working. Yeah, well, one of the things about Akron, you know, John Gross comes, comes in. Obviously, he had success at Ohio U before having some success at Illinois. And his system is really guard friendly. And Jamon's been able to take advantage of that. And we'll see because, th look, this is a challenge going against Clemson. And for Clemson, both you and Tim talked about the fifth-year seniors, and it's nice when you got two of them in the backcourt and led by Marquise Reed. Yeah, Marquise Reed, remember, he transferred from Robert Morris. I actually called his game when he played in the NCAA tournament at, at Bobby Moe. Uh, he had, you know, 24 against Carolina, 22 against Duke. They really want to continue... Uh, to allow him to stretch the defense. Watch to, for them to run uh, offense for him, more catch and shoot, so good off the dribble reputation-wise. Marquise Reed, you can put up those type of numbers in the ACC, you can put them up anyway. He scored 21 against Clemson back in 2014 when he was at Robert Marr. So let's go into the gym and join Kristen Balboni. Kristen. Hey, guys. Uh, beautiful day down here, as always, in the Cayman Islands. I mean, I think that is their national slogan, essentially. So happy to be here. I'm going to be down here for all of the games in this tournament. Doug touched on it briefly. They're all exclusively on Facebook, which you know if you are watching right now. So here's how that goes. Aside from giving our analysts, you know, a little ribbing and a little love when you like or don't like something they say, as Doug was just talking about uh, with Tim and the mid-majors, we want to hear from you throughout this entire tournament. So first thing I would like to know for everyone watching at home, is who are you rooting for? Where are you watching from? Let us know. Maybe are you at work right now? Did you are you some of the few fans that were able to make it down here to follow your team and you're just checking in on Facebook? Let me know. I also want to see you guys posting on Instagram throughout the tournament. You can use two hashtags, one for a game, one for the entire tournament. You can use the hashtag Cayman Classic. So here's what you do. You just go to Instagram, you use that hashtag, or if you're specifically watching today's game, if you're a Zips fan, if you're a Tigers fan, you can use the hashtag UAVS. C-L-E-M, as in University of Akron, versus Clemson. So we will um, we want to hear from you the entire time. Keep those Instagram comments, uh, keep those Instagrams and comments coming. We got a lot for you coming up throughout this entire tournament. We have got, okay, check this out. Clemson gave their players vlogs, so you get to see their off-season workouts like you see right there. You get to see that from a different perspective. You get to see them at ACC Media Days. It's a lot of fun. Georgia, we've got some assistant coaches mic'd up and Tom Crean's first year at practice. Some of it is hilarious. You're going to love it. How about Georgia State head coach Ron Hunter? He does this incredible program called Samaritan's Feet where he coaches barefoot for one game a year. It's taken them to many countries across the world, This uh, most recently Spain. And then Chandler Hutchison, Boise State great, new Bulls edition. He does a little cooking with some of our guys. So, guys, that's what we got coming up for you because you know that we don't have any commercials on Facebook in addition to the great game that we are about to uh, tip off with, guys. 
Thank you, Kristen. We say hello to Mark, who's watching from Grand Junction, Colorado, rooting for Akron. Robbie as well. Max is in class rooting for Clemson. And we've got 10 on the floor. Everybody else with a nice view. And we're underway. We've got Clemson in the whites. And the dark blues is Akron. Jameer Sims on the right side. Top, it's Marquise Reed into the corner. Sims. And the first shot is a three, and that's how Clemson gets started. Well, we mentioned the, the three-point efficiency of Akron, and here's Amir Sims, uh, you know, the only youngster in that starting lineup. But his ability to stretch the defense as well as you watch him here defending the ball screen, their bigs have to be able to move their feet uh, as he's a tremendous defender around the basket. React tries for the post, keeps the ball on the floor a bit too long, and Reed steps in. It'll remain Akron basketball. It's John Gross in his... Now 11th season as a head coach is second with Akron. And of course, when he was at Ohio U, they made a couple runs, made a deep run to the Sweet 16 in the NCAA tournament. Michael Newton canceled his class to stay at home and watch Clemson. Well, couldn't you just watch it on your phone? Well done. Well, I don't know. Maybe he's teaching the class. I don't know. Fair point. I don't know what his involvement is. The three is off the mark. You can count on an early shot clock issue in every one of these tournaments. <laughs> this is an actual basketball gym as opposed to some of the others playing in in ballrooms. That brought now who of course had great success at UNC Wilmington before coming over to Clemson. A guy who it was nationally known on the proverbial hot seat. Not only survived but had a tremendous season last year as we continue to have shot clock issues. A shot clock should not be at seven. That's the, the tap your head, right? That's the, the international signal for shot clock is you tap your head and then you do the little circle with the finger. That's, <laughs> tap your head means shot clock reset. And then in the NBA these days, it's reset that little, little little circle it means with your finger means let's let's look at that again. Let's replay it. And again, I think that's I think the that, sideways circle. The vertical circle is is see I still is, think that's home run. It also is home run. This is also accurate. And last year that Clemson team went to the Sweet 16, tying a school record with 25 wins. They opened in the season at 14 and one. Dominated at Little John. Dominated at home, going 15 and one. And, and I think Brad's done an amazing job of continuing to develop and evolve with his staff. Uh, he brought on uh, Marty Simmons, who uh, you know, Brad's an Evansville guy. Marty Simmons lost his job as Evansville's head coach. He's like assistant to the head coach. Continue to try and get better and figure out different ways to be effective in and out of the ACC. So now with 15 on the shot clock appropriately, Shelton Mitchell, little floater at the left hands, off the mark, and React has the board. Jackson, ball is poked out of bounds by Scar. And Jackson's a tiny little point guard, pass first guy. We saw him take a three last time down the court. And this is a challenge going against Clemson's big bodies, bigger, bigger guards. That can be physical and, and really get in the way. Ethan's watching from Atlanta, rooting for Akron. And Charles is just concerned with the line on the game. <laughs> I mean, between the start and the end of these games, the end with the replays and the and the start with <laughs> with with the shot clocks Dylan Wooten for Clemson as is Kyle and Johnny and Kyle May Wooten for Akron Akron coming in at 3 and 0 Clemson at 3 and 0 I got a chance to uh, I was in Clemson South Carolina for uh, a football game a couple weeks ago they took down NC State one I mean 
watching them run down the hill after touching Howard's Rock, but also saw Clemson's basketball facility. People freak out about their football facilities. The basketball facility is just perfect. Just perfect. That's why maybe some of these guys are so willing to come back. Off the mark, Utomi on the three. Back comes Reed. Penetration cut off. Scara and Sims down low. Thomas up at the left hand, no good. Yeah, you know, Brad it. Brunel would like to get Eli Thomas going. Yeah, and the a &M transfer is a really good low post score with long arms and a good shot block. Cut off nicely on the baseline. It's a three at the top from Riak, and we're tied at three. And, and, and that is designed within Akron's offense. It's Riak can guard the five and then stretch you out offensively all the way to 22, 23 feet. So we're tied at three. Two and a half minutes gone by here in the first. The three again from Sims. This one's off the mark, and there is Thomas to clean things up. Stands at 6'9", 245 from Dallas. With that freshman year at Texas A&M. He just got caught up in a numbers game at A&M. A&M last year, a really talented team. And it's more about playing time. He's come to Clemson and take advantage of all these opportunities. Well, I mentioned that how React as he sets a little flare screen for Jackson. This is what happens when Thomas, and it's not a great pass that React catches, but Thomas is trolling around the basket looking for a block shot. You got a stretch five out there who can make those shots. Always got to kind of keep your eyes peeled. No good again for Utomi, and Thomas grabs another rebound. That screen out there, it's starting the office. Kind of drag screen. Reed misses for three. It's how people run early offense. There's another drag screen by Rhea. Just setting a ball screen early in transition. People don't run secondary break anymore. They just run early drags in transition. Good look in the corner for Ivy. No good. Well, you mentioned Ivy needing to shoot the three a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Donald rooting for Akron. So is Charles. Thanks for joining us here on Facebook. Thomas against React. This time, left hand off the glass, no good. And ball poked around by Scarra and pulled down by Akron. Back comes Lauren Christian Jackson. Standing at 5'8. The redshirt sophomore from Chicago lost the basketball. Shelton Mitchell back the other way. Clemson moving left to right. A lot of contact, and it'll be a whistle and a foul on Jackson. Well, you saw Lauren Christian Jackson so small. When he makes that pocket pass, he cannot turn it over. And then defensively, he's just at a disadvantage because of his lack of size and width and strength. Thank you, Kristen. Andy's looking for a shout out, so. Hey. Stanley <laughs> watching from <laughs> Happy that, Valley, that, Oregon. Was that Go your Clemson. shout out? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know Andy. I can't, you know, I can't say anything else to him. Shelton Mitchell at the free throw line. There's Shelton Mitchell, another transfer at Clemson. Comes in from. Vanderbilt. Goes one for two. Clemson a 6-3 early lead. Four and a half minutes. About four minutes gone by here in the first half. Noah Kozlov, Doug Gottlieb, Tim Scarborough will be along throughout the three days as well. We'll bring you all 12 games from the Cayman Islands Classic as not really crying for Kristen having to spend all those games indoors. She is in the warm weather. Backdoor cut is poked away. John Newman the third poked it away, but it ends up in the hands of Jackson, who hits for three. Yeah, Lauren Christian Jackson, his second look. First one was a bit short. That one had his feet set. Now he's got to climb in defensively. That's exactly what he's doing against Clyde Trapp. Nice, great ball pressure. Trapp, who's not a natural ball handler, probably the best athlete on this team. They're asking him to learn to play point guard on the fly. Splitting the defense is Reed up with the right hand. Nice move from Reed over Olajipoki. And more clock issues. You see Marquise Reed and his ability to play downhill. And for anybody who's, what's, yeah, I've heard downhill, what's down? It's your momentum kind of going towards the basket. You think of 
And who's the best downhill player maybe of all time? It's LeBron James, obviously James Harden. Instead of moving kind of laterally and manipulating a ball screen, you want to have your momentum going downhill with that spread offensive game. Then how do you handle that defensively, trying to force a guy not to be able to get downhill? Uh, well, I mean, if he's coming up from ball screen, you know, it depends where your big guy's playing. If you're coming up and hedging, a lot of times you're dropping and sinking because you have a shot blocker. Just depends. You want to make a guy take a mid-range jump shot, which so few can actually take, and it's and for, with analytics, not the best shot in basketball. Tyler Cheese into the game for the first time. Misses. Great name. His right? first. And a turnover. Olajapoki is there. Back comes Cheese. <laughs> this is a great name. We've actually got some great names in this tournament. A few of them on the same bond adventure that we'll hear later on this evening. Right? I mean, say Cheese. I mean, there's just so many different. That's What's your favorite kind of cheese? It's pretty obvious, though. But say Cheese. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Obvious is not terrible. It's if you're allowed, if you allow yourself to make fun of yourself. If he hits a game winner, then yes, yes say Cheese. For sure. Yeah. See, Tyler's getting yelled at right now. He's in the wrong place. Tyler Cheese, number four. We've got Kelly rooting for Jamond Ivey. Tracy rooting for Clemson. Thanks for joining us again on Facebook. 8-6 Clemson lead, and that ball is poked away as Ivy lost it. The two-on-one, and count it and the foul is Amir Sims. We'll go to the free throw line. What a what a great pass from Reed. As Sims gets rewarded. I think he's the one who poked this ball out. Yeah, there's Sims poking the ball out. Amir Sims get out into transition, and Marquise Reed finds him at just the right moment, catches and finishes. You tell me, foul. 13.57 to go here in the first half. Clemson in front by a score of 10-6. Again, remember to tag us on Instagram. Use the hashtag Cayman Classic or UA vs Clem for University of Akron vs Clemson. And we'll get your photos on the broadcast. Dale, hello. Rooting for the Tigers in Lake Murray, South Carolina. Clemson last played on Wednesday against Sam Houston State as those fans may have been able to see both of those games and got some young students. I guess no class today, or is this this just be a great field trip, I guess. I, I would guess that the Cayman Islands is there's just a lot more days when you feel like you take off. Ah, we'll get to it. First time you ever heard of the Cayman Islands it was when? Well, probably during a uh, some sort of corporate case when as a lot of people keep money in the Cayman Islands. Yes, that, that's the first time I ever heard of it was it's a John Grisham novel. Remember it, The Firm? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. It was the first time I was like, I have no idea what the Cayman Islands is. About an hour from Miami. 11-6 lead for Clemson. Looking for Ivy in the corner, and it's picked off by Trapp. Back comes Sims. Sims is whistle for the Ooh. offensive foul. You know who? Trying to Euro step his way through there. Say cheese. Yeah. Tyler Cheese. That's a strong cheese. Yes. Not a stinky cheese. Strong cheese. There's a, there's a, there's a difference. That's not a charge. That's not, not a, a charge so. in any on any court in, in anywhere in America. He wasn't close to being set. I like that Amir Sims is driving into contact. That's what you teach guys to do. Drive into contact, get to the foul line, get an and one. He's got a game high six points in the first six minutes of the game as he'll get a breather. So Utomi and Cheese now on the backboard for Akron. With 15 on the shot clock, Jackson, the high arcer. Maria got caught pushing off the East Carolina transfer. Said, who, me? Yeah. Pushing off of Reed. We mentioned Ria, who's trying to develop that three-point game. When he's at East Carolina, I think his second year he only took 15. He's taken a couple of this year. Set that high ball screen and roll into the basket. Can't use your hand. You can be really physical in college basketball. Just can't use your hand. What a drive. Reed, strong move to the bucket. So good. 
split that ball screen, attack the defense, and finish Marquise Reed as a bucket cut. Second team uh, ECC a year ago. Seven point lead for Clemson. Oh, React with another monster ball screen. She's lost it, and Reed has it. Well, it looked like it went off the foot of Reed. No, it'll stay with no, Clemson. I, no, take a, take a look at Marquise Reed. He splits, oh, he splits, goes right past React, and then goes right in the mouth of the defense. Utomi came over, puts his hands up, maintains verticality, and Reed finishes in traffic. They, they have a great culture in this program. I mentioned their facilities. Pack facility right next to Little John. Mm -hmm. Both are, Little John's obviously been, been re, redone recently. It was opened up last year. They actually changed the angle of the court. And it was east-west, now it's north-south. Hmm. Uh, but it, this is a group that works out together, lives together, and they had some success last year getting deep in the NCAA tournament. They are hungry for more. And you have the best kind of most dangerous kind of tiger is, don't you? A hungry tiger. Well, that's a good thing they've got cheese on the court. Yes. We've already gotten a comment that says, I, I can't. Jim I, said, I, I, can't I can't with these, I, I these can't. cheese comments. These cheese, sorry. I apologize. And, and Dylan wants to know, is that Doug Gottlieb on the analyst? Yes. Well, okay. yeah. yeah. Dylan Wilkinson. It's yeah. Doug Gottlieb. Hey, Dylan. What's up? Hey, man. If there's anybody out there trying to do a Doug Gottlieb impression, God bless you. Oh, this is this is very really nasally, Doug very nasally. David Scar with that offensive foul, moving on the moving on the ball screen. Five point lead for Clemson. Eight minutes gone by here in the first half. It's game one of twelve over the next three days. The Cayman Islands Classic. React didn't know what to do with it. Cheese for three, and it's good. Don't do it, Doug. Don't, don't do it. It's making, game one. Making Swiss game, cheese game, of no, the Clemson no, no, defense? No, it's game one. Don't do it. And then Jackson stands in for the Lord. offensive foul as Reed pushed off. Yeah, he is he is talking to Marquise Reed, who's got him by a good five, six inches, and doesn't matter. Low man wins, and credit Lauren Christian Jackson. Struggled a little bit with the pressure of Clemson for a couple possessions, but hit a three and showing tremendous toughness for the Zips. There you go, just want to watch ball, just want to talk ball. All right, Keith Dambrot uh, had this program rolling before he left, going back uh, a year and a half ago, and took over the Duquesne job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the level of recruit, the level of dominance in the MAC, which is a really well coached, hotly contested league, is remarkable. And of course, John Gross ends up benefiting from that. Talk about Lauren Christian Jackson, someone he knew from when he coached at Illinois. Christian Jackson went to Long Beach State. And you get the job. Lauren Christian Jackson transfers, sits out a year, and now is his point guard. So using all the connections, all the ties, having coached in the MAC, understanding what it takes to play in the MAC, I think this is a program that's going to remain on solid footing that Keith and his staff started out. What's Anthony talking about? He said something about Jonas filling in for you today. Jonas Knox? Yeah, that's what it said. He's Jonas, no, no, I hope no, no. Jonas Knox I'm, is filling in for Doug I'm today. I'm going to do this show, and then I'm going to do my radio show, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the Boise game against uh, Creighton. And then we're going to drive downtown to Kansas City, and we're going to see at least the second half, maybe the entire game, Texas Tech takes on USC. That's a heck of a day oh, for it's you. It's all basketball. That's a day. It's great. It's a heck of a day. That is a that's heck of a day. It's a good day. day. Say hi to Tyler. Looking for a shout out in Canada. Evan hey there, his... hey there, Tyler. How are you there? Evan's hoping his boss doesn't see this as he's watching. Two point lead for Clemson. 10:50 to go here in the first half. Scara, an offensive foul. That's I, three I thus far that, on Clemson. I got to see that from Banks and Scara with his second foul, both his fouls in the offensive end. I don't know. I just, I feel like anybody was taking a charge. Yeah, I guess last second. I'm going to disagree with it just because you have to be set before the guy goes into his upward motion. But it's hard for officials because they're so busy looking at with your feet are outside the line, they can't really tell. It's like a, a baseball umpire. You know, you can't tell full swing. Mm -hmm. 
Utomi misses from deep, and it's pulled down by Trapp. And a three back the other way to give Clemson a five-point lead. It's Mitchell. And how good was that ball movement? And Shelton Mitchell ends up the beneficiary, but Clemson get five passes in a quick transition before Mitchell hits the standstill three. Back it down is Utomi, and he runs up against Sims, and Utomi gets it up over the 6-7 forward. Nice back door and the extra pass. Sims there for the easy two. Well, their ability to pass, catch, screen, move, their spacing is magnificent. This is, this is not just a team that has talent. They're exceptionally well coached and seem to be connected even this early in the season. Coach Brad Burnell turned 50 last week, ninth season at Clemson. Tomey, two dribbles, nowhere to go, and he traveled. And there's two buckets in a row by Clemson. Watch the ball moving. Shelton Mitchell passes the ball. Now what? One, two, three, ping, 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 catch, move, and then again, off of the back pick. Reed ends up finding Sims for the easy layup. Dave Bender agrees with you. Great passing, two possessions in a row. Reed into the corner, trap. It's an air ball. Back comes Jackson. I need to get Trap going in transition. He needs to find a way, use his athleticism on an offensive board. I think that'll get his jump shot going as well. React one-on-one -on -one with Thomas. Thomas is biting him up, forces him away from the basket, and the officials say a bit too physical. He looked at Brad Brownell and said, well, what did I do? And Brad Brownell said, you fouled him. <laughs> you gotta get, one of the things that coaches teach, I haven't seen Brad's practices, you gotta get your hands out of it. You get your hands out of it, and then you can't, you know, bump as much with your lower body. Get your hands up. They, they, they will allow you to be physical if you don't use your hands. They had a lot of contact, no whistle. Yeah. And then the foul on Reed. We've got more hoops action coming up. Cayman Islands all day. Coming up next, it's Georgia and Illinois State at 1.30 Eastern time. Go to watchstadium.com, click on watch live, and go to the schedule, stadium. The only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription stadium. Welcome to the game. I have all the games for you on the live college basketball feed on Facebook. Cobb not happy with the officiating, says he's seen better officiating in professional wrestling. <laughs> well, look. Co college basketball, they, they, the freedom of movement thing, for people who are saying, well, I, I thought they went freedom of movement. I want you to pay attention, both Clemson and Akron, really well coaches. When you drive to the basket now, yes, guys are taking charges, but the other thing that's become a trend, you see in the NBA, they allow verticality, which has always been in the rule book. But in terms of how it's actually officiated, they're, they're backing up what's in the rule book. You have, you're, you're allowed your space up into infinity. So if you jump relatively straight up, and we give you about 20 degrees leeway, what used to be called a foul when you jump into a big guy, oftentimes is not called a foul. And if you're big, you're like, finally, you know, for years I've been saying I wasn't fouling anybody. If you're a guard, you have to learn to adjust to play through contact, but you also have to learn you can get up in the air and change your angle, and now if they move their hands, it'll be called a foul. So what looks like contact around the basket is not a foul. There's Thomas. How about the athleticism from the big man? He's a good player. You see Elijah Thomas let React know. Good little battle inside with the bigs. And Thomas battling an ankle injury at a flu in their last game on Wednesday against Sam Houston State. There's another travel from Ivy. So he hasn't, hasn't practiced much. Now he's going to have three games in three days. A 20 to 15 lead for Clemson. And uh, well, I'll be transparent if we haven't been already. We're back 
calling the games from studio in outside Kansas City. And Kristen, I, I mean, I, I guess every time we put you on camera, that proves you're in the gymnasium, but constantly thinking you've just got your toes in the sand and you've got this beautiful green screen behind you. I did notice that our CEO is there and Kristen is there. I, I think uh, just so so good gig. So who did we who did we kick off to be in Kansas City? No, don't don't say we. I didn't, I don't think I did anything. You're, Honestly, you're, you're, it's, you're, it's a really cool. It's a really cool setup. It's like being in the truck. Is, is that Tyler Cheese again? It is. It is. Love Two more some, for I cheese. Love me some Tyler Cheese. Smooth and creamy, kind of like some Havarti cheese. I would have gone Brie. Brie's got that thick exterior. Back though. the other way. Shelton. Is Shelton Mitchell, what are you calling him? He, he's, not, he's not tough on the outside? No, I just said that, that, out, that exterior of Brie cheese is kind of useless. No, no, no. Not if you bake it properly. And what about honey on top? <laughs> Jackson up top. And there's two for Ola Japoki. The junior from Houston. It's a three-point game now coming out of the timeout. Akron seem to be playing a bit more with purpose on offense, and they've gone to zone on defense. Not a great shot from Mitchell, as good a shooter as he is. And Jermond Ivey will go to the line and and, and here's here's why. Look, there's different shots for different times in the game, and we mentioned Clemson's age and experience. You're just joining us. They have four uh, grad senior seniors, so fifth year guys. Mm -hmm. And you're up three. You don't have great momentum. He had hit a three earlier in the first half, but just on the second pass stepping in from an NBA depth three, it's not a great shot. And then not back in on defense. And all of a sudden, Akron's got a chance to pull to within one. Hey, hey, Mike Swinehart, I'm with you. Enough of the cheesy comments. I'm with you. Direct, direct all that to Doug. <laughs> Hal needs a shout out from you, Doug. Go ahead. Who does? Hal. How are you, Hal? Good to, good to talk to you. That's what we're here to do. Make dreams come true. Facebook shout outs. It's now a one point game. 6.15 to go here in the first half. And another turnover. It's the eighth of the first half for Clemson. The three is missed the other way and it'll stay. Akron basketball with the chance to take the lead. So eight turnovers for Clemson in the first half, six for Akron. Do you attribute that to anything aside from just early season basketball? Uh, I think the defense has been tremendous. And both teams are very physical defensively. And remember, this is the first game. You know, Tim and I were talking before, and he was saying, you know, like, there's so little time to prepare. True, for games two and three, but you have absolutely have time to prepare for, 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 for game one. It's Tyler Cheese. Says cheese off the back row. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it gives Akron a one point lead. Great. He is. Newman, the freshman, left handed short. And I can just see it now. You know, people showing up at Akron when they play some of those rivalry games against Kent State with cheese heads on, right? Yeah, well, they they go, go up to Wisconsin first, grab some cheese heads, come on down. Jackson. Eyeing up Thomas, the kick out. Ivy has it poked away. I'm going to guess that's an offensive foul the way things have gone so far. Still no call as Banks is on the floor. And it'll be a blocking call on Banks. Coming up tonight, we've got sixth ranked Nevada against Cal Baptist. So not just Rick, Rick, Cayman Island hey, basketball. Rick Croy is a tremendous coach. Coach of Cal Baptist, first year Division I. They already had, they, they beat ORU on the road, lost to Tulsa in a close game on the road. That'll be a tougher game than you think for the Wolfpack. Well, then you can catch that game exclusively on Facebook, 10 Eastern time on Stadium. Welcome to the game. 
And just, just you know, East Coast guy, it's Nevada. West Coast guy, it's Nevada. What did I say, Nevada? Yeah. It's okay. I mean, like, listen, it probably, it probably should be Nevada, based upon how other. Well, how do they, how do they say it there? Nevada. Nevada. Okay. So it's then like, then it's do you Nevada. Do Oregon or Oregon? Oregon. It's not Aura. It's just Oregon. Oregon. No, not Aura. Oregon. One word. How much time are we spending together? <laughs> <laughs> One point lead for Clemson, five to go in the first half. And another turnover, that's eight for Akron. Yep. And then Newman throws it away, make it nine for Clemson. Newman. <laughs> See, that's funny. Oh, if it's Seinfeld, it's funny. <laughs> well, if it's a cheese reference, not funny. I got you, Kozlov. I got you, I got you nailed. John Newman, the freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina, playing like a freshman. Super active, very athletic. He's already poked two basketballs out. Father was a heck of a player. Spent 16 years in the NBA. Johnny Newman, of course. Around the screen, Jackson trying to get around Newman. And the pass is poked away, and then Clemson lost it out of bounds. Not the most aesthetically played. Did you hear what Brad Brownell said? No. He just said, Slow down! <laughs> Which is I heard it's, that. It's what it's what yeah, it's what happens when you have you know Clyde Trapp, the sophomore, turns it over. You get the young guys come in for the old guys and they're fired up and we're 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 on Facebook. Noah Kozlov's calling the game, we're excited, I want to go get a dunk, I want to get an N1. He's like, hey, just slow down. Well, it's hard because just act it, like you're at the beach. Slow down, relax. Well, it, this is what happens though in college basketball is you're playing so much harder than you've ever played, but you don't necessarily have you don't want to play too fast. Javen White into the game for the first time and has a rebound. White will now set the screen with Clyde Trapp in the corner. Pull up at the free throw line off the glass, Shelton Mitchell. Shelton Mitchell, not, I'm not sure he meant to bank it, but we'll count it. Still snaking off, it's called snaking off a ball screen. You go off a ball screen, the big guy drops you. You kind of go, you slide across to the right, but sneaking off the ball. You tell me. He's 0 for 3 from downtown. A nifty ball handling for Mitchell, keeps his dribble. He's manipulating a ball screen into sneaking off of a ball screen. Watch, watch Mitchell. Keeping that dribble alive. Oh, what Ooh, it was a great had pass. A great pass. What a great pass. And Tyler, she's like, what, with me? Yeah, with me? White what going to me? the basket. And he, and he tripped him up. So with 3.16 to go in the first half, it's a 26-23 lead for Clemson. You're watching Akron and Clemson following us. It's Georgia and Illinois State. Have a call with Tim Scarborough. St. Bonaventure, Georgia State as well. And then the nightcap, you'll have Tim and Doug, Boise State and Creighton. And we'll Tim's have... great, unbelievable wealth of knowledge on these teams. I don't, I don't want to get, he, did, he doesn't want to get in trouble trying to talk about mid-majors. Like, we talked about this a little in the open. Mid-major is not a bad word. And by the way, they're not all mid-majors. Some schools are in fact low-majors. He's like, what is a low-major? One bid leagues, teams that play guarantee games on the road, but those are low majors. There's John Newman, son of Johnny Newman, travels. Now, low budget offense, that's for sure. That's 11 turnovers just, just here just in playing, the first just half. Just playing too fast. Just have to slow down. Playing play slow, slow down. Be quick, but don't hurry, John Wooden, right? Owen Coleman is the Cayman Island Classic all on Facebook? Yes, it is. Where you're watching right now, you'll be able to watch all 12 games. And we appreciate the viewership. That you really can interact with us. We really can see your comments. Just I'm not making keep... them up. Yeah. And another trap. I didn't think that was a trap. So make it 10 turnovers for Akron and John Gross's squad. Did five years at Illinois, went to the NCAA tournament once after you mentioned those four great years at Ohio, went to the Sweet 16 in 2012. 2010 is when they beat Georgetown. 
as the 14. There's Thomas with a second chance opportunity and he'll go to the free throw line as Ojapoki got him on the putback. Hey, look, John Gross obviously did a great job at Ohio U. Uh, and really, that, that Ohio, when he was at Ohio U, they did better in the MAC tournament than they did the MAC regular season. His style is one which I think guys love to play. He's he's always been a four guard guy, sometimes even a five out guy. He was a little bit ahead of the curve there. And while it didn't it didn't end perfectly for him at Illinois, and I, I think he would he would admit as such. It's also fair to say Illinois is just one of those programs where their expectations based upon when Bill Self was there, when they had the flying Illini, is not necessarily in line with who they were as a program. You know, Bruce Weber was there. He got fired previous to John Gross. And you know, Bruce has been done an excellent job at K-State. And at some point, you keep cycling three coaches, mm -hmm. and maybe the, maybe it's you, it's not, not the coaches. <laughs> right, you keep taking out those variables. Well, they, they had, they, they redid the arena. The the, they redid the arena at the end of his run there. And everybody else in the, in the big foot pen had a redone arena. And look, you know, hard to recruit in Chicago and do it the right way. I don't think, I'm, I'm not breaking any news to anybody who knows anything about basketball. Got a foul off the ball. On Jackson. That's his second. So Jackson with two fouls and four turnovers. Jackson and Ivy combining for eight of the 11 turnovers for Akron here in the first half. Four-point lead for Clemson. Noah Kozlov, Doug Gottlieb, Kristen Balboni. For game one of the Cayman Islands Classic. Good backdoor look, and there's John Newman the third. And you break out in that little one three one one three one kind of half-court trap. And so oftentimes we're taught as high school players, youth players, two one two. But it's Clemson's off the ball movement, not just standing, but cutting to the open. And there's a whistle as Trap got a little too aggressive. And Thomas trying to tell him just to calm down a bit. You can see which way the officials are calling the game, so you got to play that way. Well, it was, it was getting it was getting a little bit physical, and so they're trying to call some of these reaches. But again, if you reach with your hands, you're going to get called for a foul. If you bump with your lower body, it's a less than 50-50 shot. Daniel Yutomi at the free throw line for the one and one. It's two for two from the stripe. Make it three for three. And Yutomi, of course, had 25 in that game against Youngstown State. He is a he is a live body. Live body. At 17 and five against Chicago State in their last game on Friday. Goes one of two. Three is well short from Trap. Yeah, Trap has two air balls here in the first half. For a guy who's that athletic, you gotta get it going to the basket. Ivy's going to the basket, kicks it back out to Yutomi. Now it's React. One on one with Thomas. Thomas likes this matchup. React with the jump hook, no good. And flying in for the rebound is Trap. Great defense. That's that verticality a little bit we talked about. You can actually jump in the air. They're going to hit you. React's going to hit you right in the core. John Bensley says, Hi, Doug Gottlieb. Hi, John Bensley. Thomas, left hand off the glass. Boy, is that smooth. And there's there's the difference, honestly, in a, in a high major and a mid major. Of course, React, I know, played East Carolina. But it's the ability to absorb that contact. If you play and score in low post, you got to go right to that contact and then be able to go to your counter move. Elijah Thomas, a beautiful left hand hook. There's React, the dive to the basket, around uh, and out. Got what they wanted, just couldn't finish. I think Elijah Thomas is so tired. He got Brad Brownell to call a little use it or lose it timeout so they can go two for one. Watch Elijah Thomas. This is tremendous skill. He's a good player when he's at AM. Left hand, bangs, bangs, back to the left hand. Nice little counter move. You have to play through contact. Basketball is a contact sport, not a collision sport, contact sport. And that's what they teach you as you as you move up in basketball, that you can have, you've got to have, like Tim Duncan has always said it, that you have, you know, two, three 
great moves, and then the counters off those. You really need one good. move. I mean, honestly, when, like, when you simp sim simplify it, you need in the post, one move, and then a counter. And a counter. Right? One move, and then a counter. Like, that's, you don't, you're not, Keep it don't simple. Need, even Dream Shake. You know, like the, the Dream Shake was simply every year he would work on a move. I mean, Akeem Olajuwon, when he came to this country, he learned to dunk from a, a coach who taught him, who didn't know how to really teach basketball, just taught him jumping off of a chair. When he played at Houston, he didn't have great moves. He was a really defensive raw, player yeah. and a dunker. But every summer, he'd go into the lab and work on a move, and then a counter to that move. And they kept adding to it, adding to it. Right, and and then the he had, shake was just counter, counter, counter. And he had great feet and hands. And, and, but yes, it was just a it was after years and years of putting it together. And now he's teaching a lot of big men who go to Akeem. Reed, an air ball. That shot was way too late. I, I can't believe they didn't run a quick two for one coming out of the timeout. Just the math to it. More possessions is more opportunities. But we're having time. Look, the clock's still running. Right, there's clock sink issues. So Jackson's gonna have to get it up, and it's short, and that's how we'll go to the half. So there are clock sink issues, and so I'm not counting down seconds, game clock and Got shot it. clock, but we'll go to the half I'm with completely Clemson in confused. front, 31-24. Stick with me, Doug. Pull you out of that confusion. Thank you. Let's go to Kristen. Coach, you told us that this was going to be a good game before when we talked to you. It is. You started to pull away there a little bit in, in, uh, toward the end. What are you seeing from your guys? What do you want to see adjustments make? Defensively, I like the way we're playing. Uh, Akron's doing a good job defensively as well. Obviously, we've been in some foul trouble. Uh, we got to play without fouling so we can have some of our scores in the game a little bit more. All right, Coach, thank you so much. We appreciate it. 22 combined turnovers, 11 for each side, and it seemed like for Clemson, Doug, when they needed offense, you can just get to Thomas. And, and, and also, Shelton Mitchell was able to get his shot when he wanted it. Yeah, like, look, nine turnovers is an abomination. If you're, you're Clemson, you're a mature team, no matter how hard Akron's playing, really, really hard. And, and both teams are playing a little bit too fast there, especially in the second part of the first half. But... When the ball was moving for Clemson, they did get just about anything they wanted in terms of quality looks, and that's why they're shooting 50% from the floor. All right, for Akron, led by Tyler Cheese, who had seven points along with Daniel Utomi. And Cheese, as much as we made his Cheese comments, here's a look at Tyler Cheese in that first half. Yeah, when you watch Tyler Cheese, the ball doesn't have great rotation. It's kind of, it's not quite a knuckleball, but it's also not really spinning. But it, it's it's almost similar to his game. The lefty has a certain smoothness, even if it's not an explosiveness to his game. And then Sheldon Mitchell, another lefty, really good at manipulating that ball screen, scoring in the mid-range, hit that one catch and shoot three. You see him snaking the ball screen and shooting over React. You got two guys that can get buckets going against each other, and of course, it's one, you know one of the reasons that um, you know, Clemson is in foul trouble is guys like Cheese driving right to their chin. Sims has two fouls, Scar with two fouls, and Reed has two as well. And it's only Jackson with two on the other side for Akron. And you see the first half stats as Clemson shot 50% from the floor, and neither team shooting the three well. Now, and look, first games are hard. Uh, both teams, you know, they have you scouted really well. You're excited to be playing on TV. You're excited to be playing, you know, first, your Clemson, your first road game. So that's understandable. Can you get into your offensive rhythm? Felt like Clemson had about a four minute stretch there where they were in a really good offensive rhythm. Then they started, you know, subbing some of the younger kids in there. Trapp struggled. He shot a couple of air balls. Newman, the freshman, struggled a little bit. He had a travel and another turnover. A ball he threw at somebody's ankles. So the young guys have to maintain the momentum or improve the momentum when they come off the bench. They didn't do it in the first half, and I thought that really hurt Clemson. Looks like Jake is watching not just for basketball purposes, these two teams come out for the second half and Clemson plus seven in the first half. 
John Bynum says, think we got a shot? Yeah, I think if you're Akron, Akron you got a shot. Akron with the basketball to start the second half in their dark blue uniforms, moving left to right. Clemson in the white and orange, going right to left. Jackson, a little hesitation into the corner. You told me a good look at a corner three. It's off the mark. Pulled down by Mitchell. He's got to make those. As a kind of undersized, or as a Mac 4 man, he listed 6'6", six, six, he might be close to 6'5". Got to make those to space out that defense. There's that matchup that Thomas likes, one-on-one -on -one with React, kicks it out into the corner. It's Scara, a few dribbles, and the blocking call. And you can hear Brad Brownell's voice, even, even from Kansas City, right? You can hear, move, move. You can hear him now, he's telling his guys to move. When the ball goes into the post, you can't stand. You gotta find spots to relocate. So when the defense helps and they think you're, you know, two steps away, you're really five or six steps away. Scar from Zadar, Croatia. That's a hotbed of basketball. I thought you were gonna say it's just a hotbed. It's from what I understand, it's Croatia's, Croatia's, it's Croatia's quote unquote coolest city yeah, on okay. the Adriatic Sea. Yeah, I, Croatia's one of these places. I played with a couple of Croats when I played overseas, and they would all brag about how beautiful their country was. And my wife was saying, we've got to go there, we've got to go there. And I was like, go to Croatia, and you see pictures. And now it's become, you know, with their soccer team having yeah. such a great run in the world, now it's become kind of a hot, it's no longer a hidden, hidden secret. My, my in laws just did a bike trip there. A bike trip? Big bike trips, yeah. Riding their bikes 30, 40 miles a day. They're finishing off with great meals. I guess you work it off, you know. Look, not my kind of vacation. That is not but my <laughs> jam right there. They've got them all over the world. The pictures look great. There's Jackson. He gets fouled by Reed on the three. You know, the thing about vacation, vacation photos, it's a lot like your fantasy football team. Like, if I wasn't there, I don't really care. I'm sorry. If I don't, you know? Oh, no, Doug. I, I love seeing my in-laws' vacation photos. I actually, I ask for slideshows. I ask for more. I ask for details about every photo. That's what Facebook's for. So it's, it's adult show and tell. I prefer them to text me in the moment on vacation. I just <laughs> really like to know what they're doing moment to moment. That's uh, that's sarcasm, kids. If it doesn't translate over the air, as Lauren Christian Jackson lines up for second of three free throws. I'm getting ready. To, I'm, I, apparently, I'm doing play by play tonight with Tim. What do you What do you mean? Apparently, this, is, this has been on the schedule for months. I did not actually know yeah, that. Yeah, apparently. Did I, like you know, you're doing play by play with a couple of them. I was like, I am. I was like I thought Tim's doing play by play. Like no. So it may be a. We may hear a boom goes the dynamite tonight. Oh, I hope so. When me and Tim get a chance to call Boise State taking on the Blue Jays, crazy. Doug Gottlieb and Tim Scarborough. Tim will be on the call with me over the next two games. Coming up after this is Thomas just beasting React inside. We've got, well, he got Georgia work, and Illinois State next. He got his work done early. Elijah Thomas posting up, got super deep on React. React hit that early three against him, and outside of that, struggled to guard Eli Thomas. Got to make that three. Wide open in the corner, and it's short. Clemson can push this to double digits. Jackson trying to get Mitchell on the foul with the push off as Thomas misses in close against Ivy. Josh has been to Croatia. He says it's beautiful and it's a very, also very inexpensive as Thomas pulls down the rebound. It's expensive? It says very inexpensive. inexpensive. Yeah, I think for now it's inexpensive. I think it's one of those you got to get Except for the coast, yeah. Kelly looking for Ivy to go to work. Ten on the shot clock. Good take, Amir Sims. And John Gross will ask for time. Uh, he's not going to be happy with Danny, you tell me. Just a, a, a terrible closeout on Sims. Well, Sims makes the catch. Tommy closes out. Bad balance. A little bit of quit in him. 
And Riak not in position to block the shot because Elijah Thomas was the reversal man. I think it's interesting uh, for Clemson, as Kristen points out, you know, how what a great season they had last year. Remember, they thought they were getting Zion Williamson. Everybody, yeah. Zion Williamson, he went down there on unofficial business budget. They're like, look, they're rolling. They won 25 games. They got all these guys back, and they're going to get Zion Williamson. You put him on the floor with all these veterans, and the, the sky is literally the limit, or the ceiling is the roof, as Michael Jordan would say. <laughs> right, right. So, um, I, I, as much as there's hype, I do think that the Duke thing, that the Carolina thing, that also, if you've been on that campus, I mean, right now they're focused on winning another national championship in football. Mm -hmm. But Clemson is it's a very different and special place. I love it. Uh, but it's, it's a place where, even though nationally we're talking about Clemson basketball for the first time ever, I think locally there's not as much hype as it would be elsewhere. There just isn't because of football and because Zion ended up going to Duke and how Duke has looked so far this year. Preseason number six out of the 15 in the ACC. You know, Elijah Thomas is a great story. I mean, here's a kid who, I mean, he credits Brad Barnell. He said Brad Barnell put his hands on him, said he wanted to change and make him a better person. Became a father uh, about a year and a half ago. Son Ashton, really an inspiration for continuing to work on his game, work on his body. One of the stories of Clemson is what great character these players have. Plenty of senior leadership to help the young kids come along. Yeah, but it's tough for a kid not to read his own headlines. Yeah, but where are the, where are the headlines? The internet. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's not just, I don't it's think, not just I don't local think newspaper kids, anymore. But I don't think kids don't troll the internet for stuff. It's just not the way. They're on IG. You see, you see, pre, you see preseason polls. You see the... Yeah. And they're getting some respect, but they're not up, up there with Duke. I don't think nope. they're, I don't even think they got the respect that they deserve, to be honest with you. I put them in my top 10, but I don't think anybody else in, in the country has them. John, John Gross, be a helper. Tyler Cheese with another deflection. 12th turnover for Clemson, first of the half. Jackson misses for three. As Akron is three for 15 from deep. That's just not a great shot. It's 37-28, Clemson in front, and apologize for the technical difficulties on the score bug. We're approaching the 16-minute mark here in the second half. This is danger time for actors. Clemson, get a stop, try and put them away. You tell me no. 0 for 5 from 3. Mitchell will pull it back out. And that's a pretty, that's the second really clean look you tell me got. Yeah. Yeah. Starting to move the ball within their offense. This is when every team becomes harder to guard. The more sides of the floor you can change, the harder you, you, you become to guard. Yeah, really tough to guard for the full shot clock also. Mitchell, just outside the free throw line, it's short. 37-28. Jackson for two, no, and it's pulled down by Thomas. There's Mitchell back the other way. It's a tough one with the left hand. Self Mitchell, he looked to his left, he looked to his right. He wanted to make sure that nobody was wide open. And basically had a two on one there at the back end. And Mitchell's so good at using his body, getting to his left, strong left hand, thrown in off the window. Thirty-nine, twenty-eight, fourteen and a half to go. Off balance, no. You told me another opportunity. Swing it near side to Ivy. Ivy is a drive, hard drive. Oh, Japoki stepped out of bounds. In this second half, Akron really struggling on the offensive end. One for eight, and then. Oh. Bump with you, Tommy and Thomas. <laughs> some yeah, of, looks, some of the coaches' like kids, some of the coaches' kids for Clemson, man, they are cute kids. Looks <laughs> like a lot of fun. I think that's like a maybe a commercial break. Game two, day three. Kristen flosses. Okay. 
I, w I want to know, like, is there any, I mean, I, I guess you eat fish, but like, what do you eat in the Caymans? Like, do you have you a lot of fresh fish. But what fish? Oh, I don't know. Sounds like a job for our intrepid reporter. As Samir Sims gets two. It is a 41-28 lead, just under 14 minutes to go here in the second half. We apologize for the technical issues with the score bug, try to right. keep you updated as much as possible. 41-28. Hi, Al, watching from Richmond, and Scott rooting for the zip, says Jamond Ivey gets an easy two. And that's exactly what Akron needed. They needed an easy bucket. They were trying to score against this Clemson defense in the half court is really difficult. Scara. Now back to Mitchell. Around the screen, goes up with the left hand, and he's fouled. And, and you know, Mitchell, Shelf Mitchell's thinking to himself, that, that should have been an end one. Fouled by Jaden Sales. Yeah, Sales has got his feet turned in the wrong direction, comes in off the bench and gets attacked. Stadium, your new way to watch national sports. The only 24 7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription. Here's what you'll get, live and classic games, daily live studio, and original programming. You can check your local television listings or go to watchstadium.com. Stadium, a new way to watch sports. Welcome to the game. It is 41 to 30 with 13.25 to go. Jeff appreciating the way the officials are Letting a bit more physical play here in the second half. And Tisha Jones rooting for her kid. She says, that's my kid, Amir Sims. Thanks for watching. Check out all 12 of the games right here on Stadium Facebook. React. She saves it, and it goes out of bounds right in front of Santa Claus. It is 42 to 30 with 13.06 to go here in the second. Scorebook's back, by the way. There's some TV terminology for you. You're like, you know, the score thingy, it's called a bug. Jeremy Roscoe into the game for the first time. He's got the headband on for Akron, and there's the turnover. 13th of the day for Clemson. A wide open three in the corner, and this time, Akron's able to connect. Well, this has been the problem for Clemson. Is they go to their bench, not only they not had any production, but they just struggled with their cohesion as Javon White's come in. There's Chanel Banks, who Hit the three. And White, you know, it's kind of, they're not really looking for him offensively, and he kind of got lost defensively as well. Blaine Russell's waiting for a birthday shout out from Kristen. How about we give it to you? Happy birthday, Blaine. That's a tough move, Shelton Mitchell, contorting his body for two. And we haven't heard from Marquise Reed much in the second half. Mitchell has picked up. A lot of contact and count it for Tyler Cheese. How about two wit one? That's a Philadelphia thing. Is wit it? is cheese whiz. I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know that. Tyler Cheese had a hell of a game. Drives right into the heart. Javon White, we mentioned how the grad transfer from ORU struggled moving his feet. Well, here's the thing about taking hits. Everybody says, well, you don't want to get hit. Nobody wants to get hit. Well, no, but it's different. LeBron, LeBron James wouldn't play football. He wouldn't be a good football player. He'd be a great football player. Great. And he did play high school football. And was a great Right, sure, but if, but if you haven't played football, you also don't know how to take a hit. Sure. And then body recovery is different also. Yes. All these things are right. Noah Kozlov, Doug Gottlieb, Kristen Balboni with you as Clemson leads 44-36. As we are now under 12 minutes to go. Sean, you are correct. Doug Gottlieb is sitting to my right. Whoa, look out. Sliding underneath the table is Tyler Cheese, and he comes up just fine. 
and Cheese reaches through with Ooh. the wrong hand. Ooh, he's look, lucky he's okay. Lucky he didn't hit one of those posts on the. Well, Kyle Cheese has been great. Table. Just, just one kind of note, and we actually used to practice this at Oklahoma State when I played Freddie Sutton. When you're trying to run through a pass, it's called running through a pass. You have to use your inside hand. You're longer, and you're more likely to tip the pass. If you watch that, he ran through with the wrong hand. He, he ran. Uh, it should have been with his left hand on that side of the floor. Instead, he reached with his right hand. That's why he didn't get it. Otherwise, you tip it to yourself. We actually, I don't know if Tim Star Scarborough, when he played at Liberty, if they used to practice. We used to practice. That was actually how we did our practice layups. Was we'd be at one end, coaches would throw entry passes, and you'd run through, tap it with your inside hand, go run to it, stretch out, and get a layup. Reed back into the game, misses off back iron, and it's like Banks is going to be whistled with a foul, trying to get around Elijah Thomas. What are you at OK State? Did yes. you play in these early season tournaments? Uh, let's see here. We played my first year. We did not. We were picked last in the league. We ended up winning the South, and we we had one of those almost all home schedule except we beat TCU at TCU and played Arizona State was good that year. We beat them in Oklahoma City. My second year we played uh, in Hawaii. We played at the University of Hawaii in like it's like a rainbow challenge. Like four teams played Marquette in Hawaii, and then and we played in Vegas that year. Beautiful Thomas, pass. as easy of a two as you're gonna get. That credit Sheldon Mitchell and then the spacing and ball movement. They got kind of Akron spinning a little bit. Now the ball is not sticking in their offense. You played in Vegas senior year, you said, okay, State? Senior year, we played junior year and senior year. We played in Vegas. We played in the Sugar Bowl class against LSU. We played against Washington on the road. We didn't play. There wasn't as many challenges there. Watch Sheldon Mitchell as it's just that one. It's called a DHO, a dribble handoff. And because you have the shooter lifting behind, That's a beautiful look as Elijah Thomas gets the dunk. Thomas had his hand up, perfect pass. Put well, himself in perfect position. And really, I think he was, you told me he was guarding Sims. And he was guarding Sims like he's Reggie Miller. You have to guard him all the way out to three like that. You gotta get some help from the weak side. Anyway, to answer your question, there, there was no there were no Caymans. Maui existed then. Mm -hmm. Alaska, which is now defunct, was right, big then. Out, yeah. um, and I think that's about it. And then the rest were one-offs or you know, two-game things. There was the Rainbow Classic. The 10-point lead for Clemson. And you could only go once every four years. Ah. Now you go a different place every, every year. Two more for Thomas. Soft touch with the left hand. He's six for 10. He's got 13 points to go along with a game high nine rebounds. There's Jeremy Roscoe, his first two. And Roscoe benefiting from Tyler Cheese initially penetrating the defense. When you get into the heart of the defense, you kick out to the weak side, and now all of a sudden you, you're at an advantage. Clemson shooting 53% for the game. They're seven of 12. In the second half, they have yet to attempt the three after going two of seven from deep. Getting a lot of their buckets in the paint, and there's another one. Here's Marquise Reed. As that time, everyone helped on Elijah. There was help on Elijah Thomas rolling to the basket, so Reed read the defense properly and hit the mid-range. Around and out on the three for Cheese, and back comes Reed right to left. Nine thirty-five to go as Shelton Mitchell will get two and go to the line. Uh, just great recognition. He sees it, reacts on him, and so as a as a combo guard. Oh, and he he got him with the sham. He got him with the uh, called the sham god. Where you go full sham god there? Uh, it wasn't the full sham god. It's you 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 cross over and then you make the move. Uh, so a lot, a lot of guys you know, like the. the the crossover, the Allen Iverson, where you go to one side and you get a guy kind of on skates and across him mm -hmm. over. It's a different type of crossover where you actually you go right at the defense, you switch hands, and then you make the move like you're going to cross over. And it's actually really, really effective. I didn't think I recognized the full sham god. It wasn't there. the full sham god. Full sham god is you pull we're talking the ball about god, talking about god sham god who from Providence. 
As Shelton Mitchell will take a seat. He's got a game high 18 points. And here's the challenge for, for Clemson. This is the great thing about three games and three nights. You're not going to play your guys 35 minutes a night. So can Clemson get some bench production? Right, try to give their guys a breather here with 9.20 to go. The three is off back iron, off top of the backboard, pulled down by Javen White. Clemson a year ago tied the school record 25 and 10. They opened the season 14 and 1. 11 wins in the ACC, also a school record. By Trap. Really struggled the first half. They need to get some quality minutes off. Kostelak changed that shot. Utomi. <laughs> Foul on the floor, boy. Scar thought he stood in there. I, I thought he did too. You don't actually have to take a charge for it to be player control, but Utomi, who he is a built young man, lowers his shoulder. That's a charge. And you also don't have, if you're, if you're, you're the primary defender, that means if you're guarding the guy, you don't have to set your feet. You're just in, somebody dribbles into you and tries to Debo you and run you over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is what happened there. That should have been an offensive foul. Tries to Debo you and run you over. Ivy, he's fouled on the pass. This Akron team has been to the NCAA tournament. This decade twice, 2013, 2011. Sean, so Sean Bensley says, how is that not a charge? I don't know. Joe Nance, obvious charge. Agreed. I don't know who Bill's talking about. Looks like a mansion. Maybe, maybe Amir Sims he's talking about. Looks like a mansion. Mark Kostelak. The big man. Soft touch with the right hand. The 6'11 sophomore from Cleveland. Well, and this is what happened. You, you come in thinking that React, the transfer from East Carolina. Fallon Jackson, his yeah. third. He's your answer, because he can shoot a little bit, he can defend the rim more, he's a longer guy. And like, you know, Kostelak, kind of your old school Midwestern big guy, a little change of pace and actually score down there. They put Trap at the free throw line. Got clock and shot clock working again. 14 point lead for Clemson. Well, let's see if Trap can, watching the ball go through the basket. Tommy's got to keep his pants up there, dude. Because <laughs> he has undershorts on. You're on television. He's wearing those KDs. Trap's got the pink KDs on. Aren't they all custom LeBrons? No, 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 no. Those are, those are Kevin Durant's. Uh, yeah. Trap, Trap's pink ones are Kevin Durant's. Um, Clemson is wearing, looks like they're wearing all, all, all KDs. Those are orange KDs. I know that they get, I mean, they've got the LeBron jerseys. they got the LeBron uniforms. I thought they all had, at one point, I do, I do know they'll all wear the, uh, the custom LeBrons. And I think Cheese is wearing the custom LeBrons. Oh, those are Kevin Durant. Yeah, those are KDs. Yeah, That's what I'll be wearing after all four games today. Now, yep. you, you do know, uh, Balboni, you do know if you're a basketball player, you don't have flip-flops, you have slides. Yeah, this is a very big thing. Slides, here. that's right. You that's have to come right. in with the slides. Can't go in between the toes. Well, no, because if you come, into the, you come into the gym, you're already taped, whatever, you have your socks on, you wear your slides, and then you take them off and you put in your basketball shoes. Mike wants more I game, I had no idea shoes. there was a reason behind that. Oh yeah, right, you got, you got everything taped up. Well, Mike, during a timeout, we're gonna talk shoes. Now it's back to the game and Akron hits for a three and it's a 12 point game. There's that one, three, one trap again. Mitchell penetrates, little floater, it's short, gets it back. Big. Thomas has it ripped away by Cheese and Thomas commits the personal foul. I, you know, Thomas, you see the frustration on his face. They got Kostelak back there, who's not a shot blocker, but just doing a great job of just being big, staying vertical, you sticking his chest out. And we'll see if they go back inside 
offensively. Talking about the zips now they have the ball. It's called horns. It's an international horn set. Mm -hmm. A lot of NBA teams run a lot of things off of horns. Yep. Jeez, nope. well off on the three. They're two for 10 in the second half from three. A whistle. And I, I think Mitchell was out of bounds before he was fouled. He's not happy with the call, but it feels like that's the right call. You make the call, no cause. So I see he's out of bounds. They got fouled first. First of all, because... Yep. Left foot out of bounds. Yeah. And then he got bumped and fell down, but he was already out. Twelve point lead for Clemson. Seven minutes to go. You told me he needs one of these, Boom. and he gets it. His first three and seven attempts. And, and, and we're and in it, single digits. And we talked, I, I kind of foreshadowed it a little bit. When Brad Brownell goes to that bench, they just lose rhythm and lose confidence. Now he's got his starters back in the game. Good ball movement. Back iron for Sims. Jackson around the screen. He'll pull up for three and hit. Back to back threes for Akron. And it's a six point game. It's going to force Brad Brunell to call a timeout. And then John Gross's team still has a ton of confidence. And you have two guys who he gives the green light to. You tell me hits this three as Jackson drives in, draws the help. And you tell me who struggled with his jump shot all afternoon long, hits that one. And then Lauren Christian Jackson off a quick high ball screen. No one home. A little hop step going to his right, and all of a sudden the zips have a little zip in their step. Noah Gershenson pleased with the Akron back to back threes, also Scott Sarah, and then the Akron social account, the Akron men's basketball Facebook account, of course, thrilled with it. Akron will have. I love it. I love it. you got some Akron fans that have motivated the local students to become Zip fans. Sure. you got to get the locals on your side. And what's better than a, than a Zip? Uh, it's not good, a it's good, good for kids to be able to say. It's fun. I, just I, lo I, I even like that their logo is a Z. Yeah. Right? Like it's, I don't think there's another Z logo mm -mm. in all of sport. They went from Zippers to Zips back in 1950. Contest originally held in 1925 for the mascot. Mitchell, can he answer? No. Loose ball for the rebound. What Reed cleans it up. What a play for Marquise Reed. As Akron thought they had secured the board. He had guys leaking out. And Clemson's taken all stand and shoot threes against the 1-3-1 instead of getting dribble penetration and cutting. Those are harder jump shots than you think when they're coming from a wing to the top or the top to a wing. Inside out is a higher percentage. Utomi hands off to Ivy, and he's whistled. And it, it was actually out. a smart play from Utomi where he jump stopped, didn't have anything, and went into a handoff. But you can't move, and they do call that now. And John Gross is sitting there going like, you know, 10 years ago, they didn't call that at all. <laughs> and in the moment, they do. Five and a half to go. Eight point lead for the 19th ranked Clemson Tigers. So now you have to, you want to attack. Get the ball to the middle of that defense and kick out. Just a little bit, just like that. And that's exactly what Mitchell and Reed do as they connect for three, and it's an 11 point lead. You just, everybody shoots a higher percentage when the ball's coming inside out as opposed to coming from your left and then catch and have to gather to your right. Ivy pushed off, got away with it. And there's an easy dunk from Jaden Sales. Ivy's been kind of quiet here the entire game. And at the point of that pressure, he is a fantastic athlete in scoring bunches. There's three shots from There's Ivy Mitchell. Strong take. And he's bumped on the shot. This is what I was talking about. I mean, it, 
you want to reverse the ball. It's like an accordion, right? Expands, contracts, expands, contracts, and then kick out for jump shots. And then at the other end, Akron starting to get their own ball screen action moving. Uh, Sales doing a little rim hanging here in the Caymans. Mitchell, last two years, starting point guard. Trying to work his way back on that three-point shot is percentages dropped from 45 to 37. It's one for three from deep today. He's got a team high and game high 19 points. Well, he's finally healthy. You know, he didn't play last summer in Spain. He had a minor knee surgery. He played for CP3, Chris Paul's AAU program. Really good passer. Just makes the game easier for everyone else. Last year when he was out, three games, they lost all three. Clemson feels like when he's healthy, they can beat anybody in the country. Jackson gets taken down as Reed points to a slippery spot on the floor. Collision along the baseline. Right, so you got 429 to go. If you're Clemson, you know there's a timeout coming under four minutes. So you, you want to execute some offense and try and put a, put a stake into Akron. If you're Akron, and we want Jackson to make these two free throws. Let's get a steal, let's get a turnover, and let's cut this thing to, to six by the time we get to the timeout. Sean Miller famously calls these four minute segments wars. You wanna win each war. You gotta finish these segments strong before you get to a timeout. Both teams facing the one and one. Seven team fouls for Clemson, nine for Akron. So next one will be two shots for Clemson. So now Akron giving us our first look at a little two three zone. They played one three, played mostly man to man, a little bit of one three one, and now they're in a two three zone they're gonna extend. Jackson's lack of size, you should be able to throw it right into the high post over. Mitchell lines up the three, no. Thomas, Thomas has two more. Boy, has he been a beast. If you haven't sampled it yet, you should check out Stadium's Monday through Friday programming lineup. We start the day 10 Eastern, our morning show, it's called The Territory, where we take you through the biggest stories in sports across the country. Sauce and Shram moves up three hours now, so Sauce and Shram airs at noon, followed by a new high school show called Emerge at 2 o'clock. Campus Insiders moves back a half hour to 2.30. And we wrap up the day by setting you up for the night in sports with a rally. Game time in America at 6. Stadium, a new way to watch sports. Welcome to the game. 63-53. Jackson, a deep three, and he rattles it home. Cuts the lead to seven. Hey, Frank saying men against boys, I wouldn't say so. In a seven point game with 3.45 to go. Wouldn't say that's a fair assessment, the way Akron is hung in. Beautiful pass to Thomas. Thomas has been a man today. Another opportunity with a fresh shot clock. I think Jackson for a second there forgot that they were in zone as he came out and guarded the basketball. Akron having all kinds of issues around the basket. It's really hard to rebound when you're in the zone. Mitchell can't find it. Getting out rebounded 33 to 25 is Akron. Nine offensive boards for Clemson. But the points in the paint nearly double. Jackson again for three, and he uses everything. And it's a four-point game on back-to-back -back threes for Lauren Christian Jackson. Uh, Lauren Christian Jackson, he, he struggled. He hit a three early in the game, then struggled. Hit one off the ball screen, hits one when they go under, and then a little iron in your diet ain't bad. He gets the shooter's roll and the zips. Right back in this thing. I'm telling you, every time Brad Brownell's gone to his bench, he didn't have Marquise Reed in those last couple possessions. 
And they go from up 10 to now up four. That's like the Hilltoppers in Western Kentucky. <laughs> That's true. That's but the, something unique. Sorry, Tiger fans, not really unique. Although, Clemson, if you've ever been to Clemson, South Carolina, they have paw prints that lead you to the stadium. That's cool. On the, on the street. And That's on the, cool. On the, all the roads and outside been. of Clemson. Great pitch. And it was Margaret Hamlin who won that contest. She got a prize of 10 bucks, and then a $6 pair of rubber overshoes. But it is the rubber capital of the world, I would have. Uh -huh. But you definitely couldn't have been called the rubbers or the tires, right? You couldn't. Like, all right, 63-59, Clemson. 2.40 to go. Thomas brought it down, brings it back up, around and out. Gets his own rebound, can't finish, but he'll go to the line, and Banks is asking the officials just to take a look at Thomas clearing things out. Yeah, and Eli Thomas is, is holding his head. He just can't believe he couldn't make it. He can't, can't believe he couldn't, couldn't, couldn't put it in there. He seems frustrated, but I'll tell you what, Akron gave up a couple easy shots with this zone. It seems to have energized them, and it has Clemson kind of catch it and shooting threes. Question becomes now, can Clemson sh shut down Jackson, who has three late second half threes? I'm kind of curious as, as Clemson's going with Banks instead of Tyler Cheese. Cheese had a great first half for the Zips. Hasn't done much in the second half. Thomas can't help out Clemson on the free throw line. Jackson. Oh, we should have taken that layup. Take the layup. Take the two. You tell me. Uh, then it gets sloppy inside. Ooh, and it'll be Clemson basketball. And we're not under two, so they can't review it. That should have been Akron basketball, but Thank you're Lauren, right. Lauren Christian Jackson should have taken the layup. He had a dead layup. Finish it. Make it a two-point game. Yeah, it looks like it's off of Thomas. It looks like, I'm, I'm not sure it's indisputable that it would have been overturned, but it probably should have been at the best. I think Jackson might have been anticipating help defense, and you got to be able to just take that up at very least, maybe get to the free throw line. We approach the two-minute mark in game one of 12 over the course of three days at the Cayman Islands Classic. Noah Kozlov, Doug Gottlieb, Kristen Balboni, and Marquis Reed is fouled on the floor. NBA continuation, he would have had an N one. But that's smart from Marquise Reed, who struggled with foul trouble. He's got four fouls. We're wondering, uh, why are they taking Marquise Reed out? He's got four personal fouls. But when he's been in the game, they've been in complete control. And smartly there, he drove right to the hip of Reak, who couldn't react quick enough. Sorry. I see what you did there. I mean, I thought it was pretty good, but I, I apologize. You just, hope, you just hope Cheese doesn't give a, and leave you with a bad reaction. Got it. Be here all day, literally, all day. All night. Be, you'll be here. Connects on two free throws. Hal wants to know who's the top NBA prospect in this game. I would probably say Marquise Reed. Uh, maybe, maybe Shelton Mitchell. I don't, I'm, I don't believe there's an NBA player. In this game. Not a lot for the NBA. Maybe some two-way guys. Jackson, little floater, it's an air ball. Jackson should have taken the layup to last time. And that one, though it's a mid-range pull-up, probably could have gotten a better look if he let the ball turn over from side to side. More hoops action coming up from the Cayman Islands. Coming up next, it's Georgia and new head coach Tom Crean against Illinois State. Go to watchstadium.com, click on Watch Live, and go to the schedule. Stadium, the only 24-7 network available on both television and digital devices without a cable subscription stadium. Welcome to the game. Dan Muller going against Tom Crean. Tom Crean, his first year with the Dogs. 
Had that scary first uh, game when they went to Temple and slid off the runway. Reed for three, and that might just do it. When, Marquise Reed. When Marquise Reed's been in the game, the Tigers have been in complete and total control. John Gross not happy with the officiating, but he's nothing you can do on a shot like this. Marquise Reed's just like, you know what? Let's just win this game. Gets isolated, goes one on one, little in and out, step back, splash. That feels like the dagger. Russell likes it. So does Steven. And so does Dolores. <laughs> Jamie as well. <laughs> Pete says, Pete says, thank you, I can go to lunch now. <laughs> Anthony says, Doug, you're really good at Facebook Live games. You're really good at commenting. Are you doing any more Facebook Live games? We'll be, we'll be here all, all week. Try the VIA. Eric calling you out, Doug, saying that Reed probably heard you say that he wasn't an NBA player. I mean, like, look, it doesn't, it doesn't mean he's not going to make money. Right, of course. Just, if you want me to give the, you want me to lie to you and go like, oh, there's like five NBA prospects. Right, there's there's, there's just 450 not. NBA players mm -hmm. in the entire world. 450. Okay. There are over 3,000 Division I scholarship athletes. You do the math. Like, it's, and it's not like there's 450 jobs that come open every year. It's like 50 jobs that come open every year. So, do I think he's one of the 40 or 50 job guys? That are going to take a job next year? No, no, but I think he could be. He's, he's the best he'll, NBA he'll prospect. Be a, he'll be a summer league invite, that's for sure. Yes. He's a good player. And to go from Might you know, be a Rob, second round Robert, to go from Robert Morris to leading Clemson to 25 wins, to leading Clemson to being a top 15 mm -hmm. team, like, dude, he's having a hell of a career, and he's going to make some money. And if he stays healthy and he has no off-the-court distractions, he'll be able to play professional basketball for a decade. I'd like to see what Amir Sims ends up doing over the next year and see how he develops at 6-7. So we're under a minute in a nine-point lead for Clemson. We're going to have to foul here for that. Laura said she ran home to see her son, Elijah Thomas. So we appreciate it. Clay wants you to call all of Clemson's games. All of them? I told somebody earlier that, 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 that you're stuff. running for mayor in Clemson. Uh, well, how much you like it, though? I, I, I felt like I felt like there was a lot of still water to it. You mm -hmm. know, it's just small enough and just big enough at the same time. Two hours from Atlanta, two hours from Charlotte. You know, I think it's about 40 minutes from the Greensboro Airport. But I just, I like that when they redid the arena, they didn't make it too big. I like the size of the town, the feel of the town. I like how special it is a place to go to school. And you watch, it's more than just a football school. So Clemson will, as Jackson pulls up for three again, no. And ball is poked out of bounds. And you know, if they would have hired somebody in Mexico City from Clemson with their turf management program, yeah, right. we would have had a game tonight in Mexico City. That's true. Talking about the Chiefs and the Rams. So the winner of this one, so Clemson will go on to play the winner of our next game. Tyler Cheese has had himself a day. It's his third three. He's got 16. We'll play Georgia, play the winner of the Georgia-Illinois State game that comes up right after us. So stick with us on WatchStadium.com and the Facebook page. Comment, chat with us. As Mike asked, Doug, do you think the MAC is closer to having potentially two teams in the NCAA tournament in the next five years, I think this. I think this could be a year. Look what Buffalo has done already this season. Okay? I mean, Buffalo's got two wins this year already that have to put them in a conversation of being an at-large. We know how tough it is to win mm -hmm. a MAC tournament title. So yeah, I I, I I I do think so. You know what? What's hurt the MAC um, is you know, there were so many kids going pro early that kids were either transferring up or kids that would have started in the MAC years ago were now playing in the Big Ten. And I think some of that has kind of leveled off, balanced out as the MAC has begun, begun to recruit transfers as well. Some transferring down, some transferring up. And I also think you got an incredible talented list of coaches. A lot of consistency with coaches. You're not having the, the turnstile effect that you've had in previous years. 
looking to see if this is three or two. Or? I think they're trying to take a look at the clock here. Doug, do you laugh at your own jokes? No. Well, if you don't laugh at your own jokes, who's going to laugh at them? You can't laugh at your own jokes. Yeah. In, in, internally, you can. Oh, oh internal yourself. monologue. Yeah. yeah, sure. How about Furman basketball? They got a great resume as well. And the win at Villanova. I don't know how good that Villanova win is going to look. And Villanova is one of those, I think it looks better. It'll look better at the end of the year than it looks now. But winning on, but winning at Villanova, yeah. winning at the Pavilion is certainly a, a great accomplishment. As Akron came into the season, they so they were preseason five out of six in the East in the MAC. Of course, Buffalo, the unanimous pick with C.J. Massenburg and Jeremy Harris, Nick Perkins, others. Then Miami and Kent State, Ohio. Then Akron. Then Bowling Green. I'm tough with Clemson here in the opener. And the inbounds pass went on the baseline. Mitchell's claiming that it was touched first. Furman, of course, you know, congratulating themselves, not just beating Villanova, but also beating Loyola Chicago. Mm -hmm. Two Final Four teams are. We don't know how good Loyola Chicago is. I know that they won the Valley last year and returned most everybody. We have foul. We are. Elijah Thomas and fatigue setting in here. Marquise Freeze like, what are we doing? What are we calling? I thought this game are was going to be over about I 10 minutes ago. he fouled out on that. So the foul is on Reed, and that is his fifth. He plays 23 minutes. He'll finish with 16 points. And as you mentioned, this team is just a completely different team when he's on the floor. John thinks Buffalo is the Final Four team, minimum Elite Eight. <laughs> a little out ahead of the skis. Look, I think they're really good and they're fun. Uh, let's, let's take a breath. Take a breath. And that was critical. Jackson missed the front end. We'll shoot free throws the other way. And I'm sure Tim Scarborough, who'll be joining me for game numbers two and three, will get into a ton of the mid-major. As and I know it's not a, I know it's. It's not a bad word, but we'll get into some of the major upsets that have gone on across the country. There have been over a dozen of them so far to open up the season. You had a chance to see uh, Phil Fain and Malik Yarborough mm -hmm. for Illinois State. Coming up next against Georgia. We'll take on Georgia, Dodge. Tyree Crump, you, you were doing a deep dive on Tyree Crump last night, right, in your research? It's, a, it's, a, it's just what happens. Sometimes you just start Googling players oh, and you just you get start in there looking at start high, high school articles and recruiting stories, yes. all sorts of things. It's great. Then you look at the clock and say, oh, wait a second. What time is it? <laughs> I, spent, I spent last night doing that, and then uh, I was hanging out with Texas Tech's coaching staff, and we got into a deep dive on on. Bob Knight is known for the motion offense. Mm -hmm. What many people don't know is he used to run an offense called the California Reverse. And he was at Army. And we were trying, we, he was, Chris Beard was calling coaches at like one in the morning, texting them. Do you, does anybody know how to run the California Reverse? <laughs> anybody respond? No, everybody's was asleep. So did you guys figure out what exactly the California well, my, Reverse my, offense my is? My late father has notes from, as a former college basketball coach, going to hear Coach, he actually played with Coach Knight. He's a JV and the Ohio State team that went to back-to-back -back Final Fours, one has championship. Um, and he used to go and watch Coach Knight speak and has copious notes. And so I promised him I'm, I'm going to go back and go to my mom's house and try and find out what it was. It's pretty neat that he's... Well, some of these old offenses stuff. are coming back in. You look at Dana Altman and Brad Underwood. Uh, they're running an offense. It's called the, the, the Johnny Orr, uh, Johnny Orr's old offense. But a lot of these things, you can you can take bits and pieces. You see principles from all sorts of different offenses, Correct. and then then sometimes you get labeled as a guy who, well, we run this offense. And then but you got you to evolve the, the, or die. Brad, well, Brunel did not, Brad Brunel did not play this way when he was at UNC Wilmington. Nor sure, you got to play, play with your personnel and and with the style of the time. Yeah, sure. And you can just you can update some of these. You can update the right. offense. You can use pieces and parts of it. Mm -hmm. 
like the triangle but, offense gets, gets, gets such a bad to, rap, but you but you see principles of the triangle throughout the NBA. And right, and the triangle used to be the triple post. They mm -hmm. tinker with it, changed it. Johnny Orr's pinwheel motion has some attributes that people are using. A weak side pinch post, which you see in the triangle. Nancy Hammond Allen, longest minute ever. It's up there. And some of the fans just tuning in to see what the final score is. Well, we I get, get it. And look, we might get Georgia Clemson. And if you know anything about the geography of Georgia and Clemson are about 45 minutes an hour away from each other. They're going to play each other in football. They get that rivalry started back up. Foul one more time with a six point deficit. I like John. John Gross is one of those, you feel better about yourself just having a conversation with him. I mean, he's got a, just a ton of powerful and positive energy. And he and Brad Burnell go back a bit. Spent a lot of time in the same state. So when John Gross was at NC State, is when Brad Burnell was at UNC Wilmington, and, and Gross was at Ohio, and Brad Burnell was at Wright State. Wright State's in Dayton. How you is in uh, what is Athens. 13 Division I programs in the state of Ohio. What about that? Super competitive state. Well, Georgia State later on been the best program in the state of Georgia over the past Ooh. five, six years as Utomi hits for three. Doesn't matter on the scoreboard, no, but it, it some might people. in the second half. <laughs> A 72-69 win for Clemson. All right, a couple quick takeaways. Uh, obviously, you know, the stars for Clemson, for the most part, showed up. Marquise Reed, Mitchell, and Elijah Thomas were fantastic. So, too, was Sims. They're going to have to develop that bench because whether you get the Dogs or you get the Redbirds coming up next, that bench is going to be challenged with fatigue of two, days, two games in two days and the attrition of uh, foul trouble that's sure to come. But the, the experienced Clemson Tigers look to such, and then Akron put up a great fight and made it a game late. So that's what's coming up next. It's Georgia and Illinois State for Doug Gottlieb, Kristen Balboni, our entire crew. Stay with us all day, all night from the Cayman Islands Classic. <laughs>